Yo, primitives? Undoubtedly, creatures such as Homo habilis, Homo erectus, and Homo neanderthalensis roamed Earth. However, there's no proof that they transitioned from Australopithecines and apes. Moreover, the most established Australopithecine type creature is a 45% complete skeleton. Display skeletons are made of plastic and are extrapolated from these bone fragments. Besides, evolutionists admit that Australopithecines and genus Homos lived concurrently. This explodes their previous assumption that genus Homo would necessarily replace <coughs> Australopithecus. And before Darwin Darwinism, the entire slew of so-called hominid fossils were classified as either ape-like animals, genus gorilla, pan, pongo, etc., or human, genus Homo. Fossils were reclassified to mirror Darwin's theory. Besides, all dogs, whether toy poodles, dachshunds, greyhounds, bulldogs, Siberian Huskies, St. Bernard's English Sheepdogs, Sharpays, Doberman Pinchers, Great Danes, Mexican Hairless, Irish Wolfhounds, Afghan Hounds, Bloodhounds, Dalmatians, and other extremely diverse animals are all labeled Canis familiaris. Yet the difference between dog breeds is many times the difference between modern man and so-called uh, primitive man who have a, a different uh, classification. Therefore, the classification system is biased and inconsistent. Moreover, the lack of a missing link perfectly portrayed by Chaka on the Land of the Lost uh, video series should actually disprove the evolution of apes to man. Homo sapiens may have come from uh, primitive people through, or so-called, through breeding over eons. However, that doesn't uh, prove our superiority. Let's say a caveman and a homo sapiens climbed a mountain together to get food and were caught, were caught in a rock, rock slide. The homo sapiens with a, th uh, with a thinner skull gets his head bashed in and dies. His bigger brain di uh, did no good. The caveman with, with the thicker skull survives and thrives. Actually, Earth's large uh, population in modern, in modern times causes most problems and therefore me needs modern technology to address address that. Also, pr people purposely make life unnecessarily complicated. This requires others with bigger brains to develop and maintain the technology to counteract these problems. However, with small populations of cave people, <coughs> there will be enough caves, mountain clefts, and unspoiled land for them all. If they all loved and respected each other, that would make life easier than highly technological yet antisocial societies. They would enjoy reproducing and relish God's green earth paradise. Famous author Ernest Hemingway said, Happiness in intelligent people is the rarest thing I know. Besides, Homo sapiens and uh, primitive people could have lived concurrently. Dating methods are unverifiable. Also, our, gi our gigantic leap in life expectancy is fictitious. And I, I made an article addressing that called Technology uh, Under Life Expectancy in Modern Medicine. Regardless, there's, there's no connection whatsoever between primates and fish, amphibians, or reptiles. Life's interdependence, symbiotic relationships, life forms mutually dependent on each other number in the hundreds. Though some plants thrive for, by being non-edible, in case in barbs are poisonous, which is logical for survival of the fittest, most plants thrive by being edible. This attracts animals which carry or eat their seeds which fall off or are expelled, sprouting into new plants. There, there is also obligate symbiosis relationships which are absolutely necessary to both symbiotes. For example, mitochondria and humans are, are related by obligate symbiosis since mitochondria Chondrian organelles cannot live independently and produce cellular respiration fats, proteins, and enzymes without which humans would die. Skeletons and exoskeletons could never develop or exist on their own. That would be like an animated spook house a skeleton ha uh, having roamed the earth. Skeletons cannot even exist as independent cohesive units. Movie skeletons are held together by wires. <coughs> and mammals could never develop or exist without skeletons. If so, we'd be a planet of creatures resembling the blob. Life is interdependent 
interdependent, remember that, by design. And oil and water don't mix, unless purposely mixed and won't stay mixed, unless intelligence is used to, to purposely affix them, such as in cars. Animal, yet animal and human bodies are mixtures of oil and water along, alongside cars. Consider intelligently designed automobiles, like I just said, with, with designated parts that variously use oil, engines, and water radiators. Peace, piecemeal development? There are no adequate explanations for supposed piecemeal structural development. Consider the eye. Though there are successive degrees of eyes with, within nature, or at least supposedly, and therefore successive degrees of light sensitivity and, and vision, in advanced size, numerous parts are interdependent and soon would have to develop simultaneously. Despite evolutionary, evolutionary uh, biologist Richard Dawkins' props, which, which illustrated supposed stages in eye evolution, they were far too simplistic. For example, if we suppose that our eye sockets developed to create shadow images and direct light, a lens later growing over the eye socket, as, as Richard demonstrated with the glass end lens, would not work, since bone grows out of bone, not something made of flesh. Human eye sockets, having been designed to protect our eyes, is more logical. And unlike Richard's model, real eyes would have immediate need for optic uh, veins and arteries. Moreover, the parts in advanced size fit together like automobile parts fit together, whose diverse parts serve the functions of the other parts. To create eyes without God, a galaxy of favorable effects would have to occur far exceeding the magic of Harry Potter. Reproduction is all or nothing. Every life form on Earth needs a fully developed reproductive means before its generations end. Even being almost able to reproduce would naturally fail. Think about it. Think about it. Moreover, there are many other examples of irreducible complexity. The inability of a complex biological structure to have formed by numerous successive and slight modifications. The pseudoscience of vestigial or trace body parts says that humans have organs which evolution has rendered useless. For example, the human so-called tailbone correctly termed coccyx, cited as proof we evolved from animals with tails, gives ligaments and nine muscles a place to attach to. It's also a weight-bearing structure to support a sitting person. It's not vestigial. Moreover, everything in nature occupies an important place. Mosquitoes are assumed useless, although they pollinate flowers and, pro and provide an important food source for a wide range of creatures such as, such as fish, turtles, frogs, birds, and bats. Butterflies, mites, uh, moths, ladybugs, and other insects pollinate flowers, remove debris from the ecosystem, digest feces, and do other important functions uh, that we rely upon insects for, to perform. The moth Bombyx mori is the most prized insect of all. Its larvae produce all the world's silk. Uh, codes of life. The gene pool dictates the parameters of any species' potential offspring. That's the extent of their ability to so-called evolve. Dogs can never produce cats, orchid seeds can never produce apples. Even crossbreeding such as lion and tiger, liger or tigan, and donkey with zebra, zebras, also always produces sterile animals. So creatures cannot transmute into anything not already encoded in the genes. Mendelism. Mutations are copying errors in genes that are nearly always lose information. Since harmful mutations always far outnumber beneficial ones, this source would cause life to run down much faster than it could evolve upward. Also, advantageous mutations have downsides. For example, fused appendages in sand dwellers uh, supposedly web feet is countermanded on any terrain outside of sand. As for extraordinary bone density among humans, which can save lives in cases of major car accidents, it can cause drowning in situations involving water due to inability to float. Besides, there are never any transmutations towards another genus. Sharing over 90% of our DNA with chimps and bamboons uh, means little. Though we share 50% of our DNA with bananas, we're not half banana. DNA molecules themselves have almost a billion parts, each constituting bits of information. 
even a 1% difference in the genome, complete set of genetic information, would be enough information difference to fill a thousand telephone books. If chromosome numbers were of primary significance, apes and monkeys, 48 chromosomes, would more closely resemble tobacco plants, also 48, rather than humans, 46. Ferns, 480 chromosomes would then be the highest evolved species. Notably, pig and human zygotes look identical, while zygotes from other uh, primates look much different. Stay tuned for part four.